Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome into the Everyday Until 8 a.m. experience. This is your morning dynamic devotion and prayer. Let's go this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for watching on Facebook and on YouTube. Make sure that you're uh, subscribed there on YouTube. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning, good morning. Glad everybody's here this morning. Make sure you come in uh, with your hands up. Come on, how you, how you do your hands up digitally? That's with your hearts, that's with the high fives. Come on, good morning. See somebody you know, tell them good morning. Tell them good morning. Put your sit in, your state in. Let us know where you're watching from. Every day, we're going to give you inspiration every day, motivation every day, and application. Come on, we're consistent. Breakthrough is on the other side of consistency. If you can be consistent in this area, you will find multiplied breakthroughs in your life. Let's go. Let's go this morning. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? If you have a prayer request, please put it in the comment section there on the wall, and someone will immediately pray with you, pray for you. And if we miss it, they're going to go back and comb through the notes, walk through all of the comments, and pray for every prayer request. If you feel your prayer request is a little bit more private in nature, uh, please feel free uh, to click on the prayer request link there and fill it out in its entirety. And within 48 hours, we will have prayed for your prayer, uh, prayed over your prayer request in agreement. The power of agreement uh, changes things, just like the Word of God has the answers for everything. And so we believe that this is the process that God has outlined, and that is the one we will follow. So make sure that you uh, you, you, feel, you feel that in. If, you're, if your prayer request requires faith-filled instructions, then I, myself, or someone from the team, uh, one of the four of us will uh, send you faith-filled instructions and reach out and connect with you, okay? So we, uh, we, we call that a spiritual prescription, where we give you the word of God, you know, pray over it this way, let's get it done, all right? So it's not Catholicism. Uh, but it is definitely using the sword, uh, which is the word of God, the truth, and using the shield of faith and uh, applying this to your life, letting you walk this out and see this in its entirety fulfillment in your life. That's what it's about. All right. But we also like to get your prayer, your praise reports, too. If your prayer has been answered, come on with the praise report. Amen. That's what we want to get. So let's get into it. Every day we say uh, when you're there uh, to indicate today. Uh, for your app, but before we get to the app, we always say, say ready uh, to get your inspiration and where it's coming from. Your inspiration is uh, the word of God because this is dynamic devotion and prayer. Now, the reason why it's dynamic is because we all participate. Amen. All right, let's go. Make sure you like, comment, share, and text somebody right now. Get them on. Let's get ready. Listen, y'all, this is a try. If you see somebody you know, or you're glad to see somebody that you hadn't on the wall, you see their name come up, you see their picture come up, and it just blesses you. Why don't you just reach out before we jump into this thing and tell them how much you appreciate them? How do you do that? Hey, listen, I appreciate your faithfulness. I love you. Hey, good to see you this morning. What a wonderful opportunity. Hey, gl glad, glad to be in the land of the living is what they used to say. Well, today, come on, facts. We here. Come on, facts. We might as well go on and praise. Can y'all, can we just do that for a minute? Let's fellowship a bit in our tribe digitally. Let's enjoy a little bit of this. Uh, come on, this is Jira by uh, Maverick City Music and Elevation uh, Church, Elevation Worship. Come on, let's go. Love y'all. Good to see y'all this morning. Good to see you this morning. Good to see you this morning. Take that time and fellowship a little bit. Go ahead. YouTube, y'all go ahead and do the same thing, YouTube. Come on. Y'all fellowship. Talk to each other. <laughs> Get somebody on there. Text them. Yeah, 
Where you at? <laughs> when we get into the weekend, come on, that's the faithful ones. <laughs> Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Well, great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. Uh, I got the readies. I got all the readies. Come on, Kamisha Lloyd there uh, in YouTube got it to us first. So let's jump right into it. Your inspiration this morning, your inspiration this morning, come on, EDU, is coming out of 1 Peter, the third chapter, 1 Peter, the third chapter, and verse number 12. 1 Peter, the third chapter, and verse number 12. And, uh, and it reads, it says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. It says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord, the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. And, uh, and so every, every day we try to give you something a little different out of the scripture uh, that is in line, uh, but you may not have seen. So prayerfully, you're able to see what I'm going to show you today out of 1 Peter 3 and 2. Uh, this, this passage is right in the middle, or uh, there's some, this, this, actually this entire uh, set of letters here uh, from Peter which which were laid out uh, kind of like in the middle of what Paul is doing and getting ready to close. Uh, the, the format of the canon of scripture, now I'll place it here because it appears to be uh, the most appropriate place. And also uh, we are mindful of the timing and the writings and how those things happen congruently at many times. And this is a compilation. The Bible is a compiling or a compilation, not necessarily uh, an in order kind of text that this is the beginning of time and this is the ending of time, even though it has the bookends of Genesis and then the back end of Revelation. Uh, this it just happens to be uh, how it's compiled and everything else is in between. And so we're here uh, in this passage of scripture, or we're here uh, in this, this letter uh, that Peter is writing, and Peter is expressing his heart, he's sharing his heart, and he's, he's talking to us in, in aspects of how he walked with Jesus. He's talking to us uh, from the vantage point of being a, a believer, a follower of the way, and being s and so close to it. And here in this in this component, uh, he's talking about his savior, and he's talking about his friend as well. So when you read this, this is not condemnation that Peter is writing, as much as this is reflection and the heart of the apostle wanting us to be able to walk and live accordingly. These are instructions for living. Yes, these are. Uh, these are tenets, if you would. These are pillars that Peter's writing. And so in this in this verse, uh, verse number 12 in chapter three, uh, Peter says, for the eyes of the Lord. In other words, he's saying the Lord not is watching, but the Lord is watching out for. The Lord is what he he's he's surveying. He is uh, he's paying attention to. So the Lord is paying attention to he's He's looking and he's seeing. He said, for the eyes of the Lord, the Lord is watching. The Lord is watching out for, or his eyes are on the righteous. The Lord is watching out for uh, those uh, that are just, those that are that chose him, those that love him, those that have decided that Jesus is the way. Hey, have you really decided that Jesus is the way? As we live in this planet and as we live here uh, in the earth, it is important for us to settle our decision 
on whom we follow because the decision uh, determines our actions. The decision determines the actions. Whatever you have decided, uh, your actions will follow or will tell us what you've decided. Your actions are uh, are going to be the mirror of the decision. Your actions are going to be the image, uh, imagery, the activity, the ops, the optics for the decision you made. And for those of us who have decided that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is the one in whom we believe and whom we follow, then our lives are expected to reflect such decision. So the eyes of the Lord are on those who have decided that he is the way, that he is the one, and that's who we follow. And then it says, and his ears are open. So we talked about the eyes, and the eyes and the ears are part uh, of the, the, I was going to say the fivefold, not the fivefold, but the five senses, uh, sight and hearing. Uh, and they also correlate uh, in, the, uh, in the scriptures. It's been a minute. Uh, but they also correlate uh, to your spiritual uh, ability, your soulless realm. So the eyes uh, focus in on the imagery, the imagination, and the ears, uh, the ears focus in on the memory or uh, the gateway to your spirit. Faith come by hearing. That's uh, why I tell you, eat with your ears. Uh, your eyes, your eyes, uh, you paint with your eyes. You paint on the canvas of your imagination, and then your imagination will pr produce in your life the things that you are believing for. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. If you have difficulty receiving them, then you get some assistance. Uh, you pull out the thing that you're believing for. You get a picture and an image of it, and or uh, you draw it out, and then you meditate on that so that you will be able to paint it. Once it's on your imagination, then the Lord will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask, think, and or imagine. Therefore, your imagination is for your soulish realm as is, is as important as your ability to see in the natural realm. Say that again. Your imagination uh, in the soulish realm, the paint on the canvas of your imagination in the soulish realm is as important as is as important as seeing in the natural realm. Come on, your ears being able to hear, hear because what you hear, you will hear things before you see it, which will allow you to remember so that you're not shocked when you do see. That's why I say you'll, you'll hear something before you see something, because we, we know to say, hey, you got to see it before you see it, but you've got to hear it. You've got to be able to hear it. You've got to know that when I hear something, I, I'm alerted, I'm aware, and I have an expectation that what I hear, I'm going to eventually see. It's kind of like hearing music off in the distance, and as you're getting closer to the music, uh, you're able to see uh, what is going on in the space. So it says that his ears, his ears are open. Now, this ears are open is not just that he hears only, but that his ears are sensitive. His ears are tuned to the righteous. His ears are sensitive. His ears are, are tuned to the righteous. It says that his ears are open and they're open to their prayers. Not just hearing them, but hears them and hears their requests. Our prayer is conversation with God. It is talking to God. It is, it is him talking to us. It is uh, us being able to uh, interact in that space. Peter was walking with the Lord and knew the Lord and recognized that the Lord was very attentive to those that were close to him. He was attentive to those uh, that were with him, that were righteous. Uh, but his ears were tuned to them as well. So he could see them. He could hear them. He knew where they were. Kind of like a parent whose ears are tuned to their child's voice. And or let's do it this way. A child whose ears are tuned to their parent's voice. They've been with kids and other adults all day long. But their parent walks in and, and speaks their name or is speaking that child will be able to hear uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was out walking, Sir Bishop, y'all, I was walking Bishop. And so we got in a park and I let Bishop go off uh, off of his leash. I, I let him go so he could run and we could play. And so uh, I began to walk uh, in the direction of going to the house. But at this same park uh, over the fence uh, was the track and my daughter was working out at the track with several of the girls in her tribe. They got a workout tribe where they, they work out on Mondays and Wednesdays. And so uh, I'm walking with Bishop 
and me and Bishop are walking. And all of a sudden, y'all, uh, Bishop turns his nose up in the air as we're walking. And so when he looks up, I look up. And I'm wondering, what is he looking at? And so I'm looking around now his nose thinking maybe there is a, a, a bug, uh, uh, an insect that's flying around or a bird that he saw. But then he turned his nose in this direction and he was he was doing this here, shaking his head. And when he was shaking his head, he just took off running. I'm like, where are you going? Come here. And so I'm trying to tell him to come here. I mean, I'm, I'm he's not paying attention to, to my voice at all. <laughs> Because he heard the voice of his owner. He heard the voice of my daughter, which was which was way on the track. He runs, he runs. Y'all, he was tired too. He was running, he's running, he's running with his big old self. And he runs and finds my daughter. He heard and paid attention. And then his body responded to what he heard. And he went in that direction. I'm trying to tell you that when you are righteous and have chosen the Lord, the Lord hears and then he responds. He will hear us and he will answer us and show us great and mighty things. This is what Peter is saying. He's saying that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and the ears of the Lord will hear their prayers. The eyes of the Lord, he's watching out for them and he's going to hear their prayer and their request. Then we get a but, all right? Then we get a but. But the face of the Lord, so now the face of the Lord, or the countenance of the Lord, okay? So this is going to help you not misinterpret this moment. The countenance of the Lord, the face of the Lord, everybody say your face. Come on, your face, though. Your face, I always tell our church, I say one of the things we got to make sure is that we got to be mindful of our facial expressions. Your face, though. Somebody say your face, though. I know what you're saying, but your face is saying something else. I know what you told me, but your face is saying something else. Your face, your face. Get your face together. Fix your, fa your face. He says, so the face of the Lord, the countenance of the Lord, it says, is against those who do evil. Now, this is not saying that the Lord is against those that do wrong. The, now, don't, don't misinterpret that. I'm just talking about this passage of scripture here, okay? There's no permission slips uh, in this devotion this morning. <laughs> it says, the face of the Lord is against those. So if we're talking about the countenance of the Lord, we're not talking about the hand of the Lord. We're saying that this is saying that the Lord is displeased. The Lord is disappointed. The Lord is not, 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 not happy with those. He, he, my mom uh, was really, really good. Didn't have to, didn't have to beat us. Uh, I mean, didn't have to uh, spank us. Uh, okay, didn't have to uh, ex execute corporal punishment all the time with us. I don't know about your mom. I'm just talking about my mom. Uh, she didn't have to. I picked up the same trait. My sister got the same trait. My brother got the same trait. Why? Because if we could bottle this and put it uh, in a jar, uh, it would sell to parents that have a difficulty with children. My mom had a look on her face that let you know you was in trouble. Anybody else mama like that? I just want to know. It was anybody else mama had the look that spoke. The look had languages. The look could tell you uh, whether this was going to be one that you needed to get together or one that, oh man, when you get it, it's going to happen. Uh, she had a look that could talk. This is saying that Jesus, somebody, y'all know what I'm talking about. Mine too. Go ahead. All of y'all, you put up mine too. That face, right? That man, that face that lets you know, hey, you better get it together. Something, something going to happen. Or that face that lets you know, hey, it's going down in just a few minutes. You wait till I get up. <laughs> so he says, the Lord's face. So the Lord, the Lord for those that do evil, for those that do wrong, those that are that, that are that are not walking in the righteous uh, component. Here's what happens. Jesus gives him a look. Peter was, remember, Peter was walking with the Lord. So Peter saw this look and the Lord frowns. The Lord is disappointed. The Lord is displeased. And he gives them the look. Now, here, here's what the look is. The look represents, he gives them warning to get it together. Just like our parents, our, our moms, our dads, our dads gave us the look to get us to get it together because what we were doing or what we are doing is displeasing to them. Now, isn't that nice to know that this doesn't say that the Lord destroys them. He annihilates them. He's killing them. They're going to die. That's not what, the, that's not what it's saying. It's saying the Lord is giving them warning and saying, hey, and Peter knows more than anybody. He watched it. He saw it happen in real life, in real time. 
So this passage of scripture, the, the inspiration for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The motivation for that or the, the, the motivation for the application from this passage of scripture. I'll give you the motivation, then I'll give you the app. All right. It says the war, the Lord is watching out for those who love and have chosen him. He listens for their, come on. He listens for their prayers and requests. However, for those that do wrong, he frowns upon them. For those that do wrong, he frowns upon them. But it gives them an opportunity, folks, uh, to be able uh, to get it together. Come on. Are you ready? Somebody say today. Come on. Somebody say today. Come on. That's right. You. So that's, that's right. Miss Gloria, you get that act right face. Come on. You better act right. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. All right. We have a beautiful, that's right, Pastor T. We have a, such a kind and long suffering God. Uh, I say that uh, he, he is a loving, benevolent king. And the greatest response to the love and benevolence of our father is worship. We send our worth uh, to him. We ship our worth off, our value, what we value off, because he could have destroyed, but he doesn't. He, fr he frowns like a loving parent uh, to get us to get it together. So there's not destruction in this passage as is sometimes uh, defined or sometimes explained. No, it is a loving, a loving Jesus with Peter saying, Peter, now you know better. And Peter is telling from his personal experience. <laughs> All right, today, I got a bunch of todays. I got a bunch of todays. All right, come on, Mama Renee. Here it is today. Do everything to it today. Your application is today. Uh, get in your journal. Get your EDU journal out uh, with a little old pages here. So it's about time to get some new ones out. All right. It says, do everything today to please the Lord. Do everything you do today to please the Lord. Let me give you some help with that application on today. That's your inspiration. First Peter, the third chapter, verse number 12. Uh, that's the inspiration explanation. That's the motivation of it. Uh, the Lord is watching out for those who love and have chosen him. He listens for their prayers and requests. However, for those that do wrong, he frowns upon them. Do everything today to please the Lord. Uh, to help with that, that's your inspiration, your motivation, and your app. To help with that today, one of the things that I made sure I did when I was a child is that, um, and, and, and she didn't necessarily always like it, but she always knew uh, that it was my heart, all right? Uh, what I would do is, man, I would change the furniture around, I would clean up uh, the house, or uh, I would rake our yard. Our yard, we had these trees, so grass wouldn't grow on the side of the house where these uh, paper trees were. Uh, but I would even go as far as putting lines in the dirt and sometimes even designs so that uh, there would be an appreciation that we are taking care of what she's working hard to keep a roof over our head, food in our mouths, and to keep us safe in the midst of the hood. But man, we would try to do things to make sure we pleased her. So that's the, the application today is when I'm walking and living today, let me do everything that I do to please the Lord. That's being cognizant. That's being, uh, that's being aware of how you're living on today. Let's be conscious of our actions and how we live on today that is pleasing to the Lord. Come on, y'all. Would y'all give God praise for it? Come on, give him praise for it. Right, right, right. Listen, my mom, right. Hey, listen, y'all. She would have a bag of uniforms. And I'm telling you, when I came into the knowledge, I, I give this testimony before, uh, I would just want to make her happy. So I would iron her uniforms and sometimes even uh, pop when she showed me how uh, to polish her shoes as a nurse. And y'all got to understand, being a registered nurse in the time when we were growing up, uh, wasn't a tough feat to overcome. And she wasn't a nurse just anywhere. She was a nurse in the most prominent hospital uh, in our city. And so, man, we just tried to make sure that she was pleased because, man, girlfriend was working. The three to 11 shift. For all of those that were like, you know, my mama never came to my games. I never had that cry because I recognized, wow, she, while I'm playing ball, she's working so I can, so I can play ball. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So uh, listen, give me give you that same example. While you're doing what you're doing, the Lord is working behind the scenes to make sure that you can keep doing what you're doing. Come on, you better give him praise for that. You better give him glory for that. That's a revelation for somebody right now. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears, come on, his ears 
<laughs> a tune he's listening to their prayers while i was playing she was she was working to make sure i could keep on playing anybody want to give god praise for us come on that's how the father works he's a loving parent he's a loving and kind parent and instead of destroying you he just gives you a face that says get it right get it together come on y'all give him praise for it this morning hallelujah <laughs> Let's pray this morning. Can y'all, let's pray this morning. Father, we bless you this morning. We give you glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. We come before your throne. You said to come boldly, God, and make our requests known unto you. God, when we come with glory, find you. We're, we're entering in with praise. We're, we're giving you thanks and we're, we're magnifying you because you are the great God. You are Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. You are Jireh. You're the one who looks after us. You are Jireh. You are our God that even when we, Father God, are in situations, you give us warning and provision to let us know that you're still working behind the scenes to make it happen for us. You're still working, God, to make things show up in our lives. We we give you praise and honor on today. You are the great God. We thank you. We need you more now than ever before. We magnify your name. We ask more now today that you show us your way, God, that you lead us in your path, that you are, God, going to let us know what that thing is to do. We lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, Father, we acknowledge you. We give you glory. We give you praise and honor. In all of our ways, we follow Follow your instruction, your steps, God. The steps of the righteous are ordered. You have ordered our steps. Let our steps be your steps. Let our cares be the things that you care about. Let today, let us please you, Lord God. So Holy Spirit, lead and guide us. Father, pour out your wisdom upon us. Let your anointing work through us, God. Give us the strength and the joy of our salvation. And we'll give you praise. We'll magnify you. We'll give you praise. We'll glorify glorify you. We'll give you praise. We'll lift you high. We'll give you praise and showcase, God, your wonderful works in our lives. Let the words of our mouth, let it be from the meditation of our heart. Let the words that come out of our mouth be a reflection of your goodness to us, God. God, we praise you this morning. God, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord God, that your eyes are looking for ways to bless us, that your ear is tuned to our voice and hearing our request. And God, so we want you to hear that we love you. We want you to hear that we want to do what you want done. We want you to know, God, that we bless your name today. We ask that you, God, forgive us because you've been so good and you've been so kind. We, God, ask for your forgiveness. We apologize. We repent, God. We change our minds about the things that we, we didn't know were sin. Thank you for revealing them to us by your spirit. Thank you for showing us. Let the mind that was in Christ Jesus also be in us and let us produce those things which are lovely, those things which are noble, those things which are kind and pure. Let us meditate there so that we can produce the fruit of the spirit in our lives, the love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the faithfulness, the gentleness. Come on, God, and the self-control. Let us produce it out of our lives, the peace that passes all understanding, that's guarding our heart and our mind. Let us also be, God, representatives of the kingdom and let that fruit flow from us, God. Today, work in us, God. Today, work through us, God. Today, today is our daily bread. Today, God, we are worshiping you this morning. We woke up with the intent to give you glory today. We woke up to come to the tribe to get a word from you, God, so that we can walk in the earth today. Day, God, and be the word walking in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us be the word walking. Let those that see us, let them read a living epistle purchased by the blood of Jesus. Come on, redeemed and reconciled. We are your children, God. Let us be a reflection of that on today. We praise you for it now. Come on, if you got that revelation, just go ahead and give him praise for it now. We are, let us be your walking word now. Living epistles being read of men. Hallelujah. Let us be the oracles of God. Let the words sound like you, God. Let us be the ones in the voice that they go, I heard God when you spoke. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for working behind the scenes so that, God, we can be on the scene. Oh, do you be all the glory. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you would heal, God, those that are in need of physical healing 
in every area of their lives, in every area of their body, rather, from, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, deal with varicose veins now where there's a pain on the inside of the right leg. There's a pain for someone that is here now on the inside of their right leg. The pain goes from the middle of your thigh down to your knee, from the middle of your thigh down to your knee, almost like an a, a arthritis kind of piece. If that's you, y'all know how we do. Whenever the Lord speaks like that, go ahead and put that in the comment section so that we know that the Lord has spoken to someone specifically. There's a pain on the inside of your thigh from the middle uh, almost down to the knee. Well, it goes down to the knee. Father, we ask that you would heal all of those, whatever situation it is. And God, we confidently declare that Corona COVID has to go. We bind it now in the name of the Lord Jesus that it will be no more. There will be no more need for vaccinations, no more need because God, you will eradicate it, eliminate it, it will be destroyed and gone. You have done it before. We have an expectation, God, that you will do it again in the name of the Lord Jesus. There it is, I saw it. I saw it, Daphne William Scott. Father, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will heal Daphne, heal her leg in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever the issue is, we bind any clot we bind uh, any blockage. We bind any kind of issue at God. If it is a pain or a tear that you would heal it now, we declare, go ahead, lay hands on your head. All of you that are dealing with any kind of sickness and disease and or issue, lay hands on yourself now. Father, your word says that we are able to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I declare God, wow, uh, uh, Miss Adele, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you will do the same in their lives as well, God. That you would do it for Daphne, that you would do it for Adele and every other one that I may have missed in the comment section, heal their leg, God, in Jesus' mighty name. And I declare, God, that you will give them comfort as they go to the doctor to get the diagnosis, God, that if there is any resistance, that they will go and that they will find that it is not a severe thing, but it is something that they can heal or they can deal with until, God, you produce healing. We're asking, however, that you would do it now. Come on, if y'all agree with me for the Lord to do it now, Father, do it now. It doesn't have to wait, but do it now. We want to get the report of the doctor that there is nothing there so that we'll know, God, that we have a verified medical miracle. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, y'all. If you receive it, give God praise for it. As you praise God for somebody else's uh, healing and prayer, you're sowing a seed for the healing and for the answered prayer for yourself as well. Come on, somebody. Give God praise for it. Give God praise for it in the name of Jesus. We ask God that if it's anybody that's dealing with death now, that you would stay the hand of death and that you would cause the death spirit to pass over because you are not done with them yet and they have not completed what they were supposed to complete now in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we speak to you now, uh, death angel, death spirit, pass over those whom time it is not. And the mercy of God, may they recover fully and may they be able to not only recover fully, but they will have your words in their mouths and testify of your goodness. We thank you for it, God. We thank you for it now. We thank you and we give you praise for it now. Bless it now in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you thanks. It's in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and soon coming King that we pray. And everyone said what? Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Passover. Passover. We pray the Passover for those that are facing death. Come on. We pray the Passover as we get prepared to come into Pentecost Sunday, y'all. It's Pentecost Sunday. Now, at our church, uh, it's Sabbath Sunday, so we're going to be off. We want you to celebrate Pentecost just as you would as if you were uh, in the Bible days. That's throw a party. That's have a feast. That's fellowship with people. Get in your tribe you and have church right there. Get in your tribe wherever you are. We will have something that's online, but we won't have a uh, service live uh, on this week because you're going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. It's Sabbath Sunday for us, but celebrate Pentecost Sunday wherever you are. And listen to me, hear me. If you're a part of the amazing tribe and you are gathering together two or three uh, in a home and say you're in Zambia, <laughs> 
that's an amazing church. We now declare that that is an amazing church. You're a part of the amazing network, uh, the Zion, the Zion Global Network. We hadn't launched out, but you're a part of the Zion Global Network, and you're an amazing church. Make sure that you log in and watch us and let us know where you're watching from and who you got watching with you. That's what we're going to do this weekend. That's Pentecost weekend. That's Pentecost Sunday. It's, what's that? That's 50 days after Jesus um, had risen, walked with us, and then ascended. Y'all, it's going to be a blessed day. Celebrate. Have fun. Pull out your grill. Celebrate some kind of way. Uh, cook your potato salad. Celebrate. <laughs> Listen, I love y'all. This has been your uh, EDU, your everyday until 8 a.m. experience. I'm Derek Golden. Thank you so much for joining us. Y'all know I love you. Appreciate it. And if the Lord shall say the same, we'll meet you back here tomorrow morning at the same time, uh, that's 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, for your morning dynamic devotion and prayer. Y'all have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. We love you. We'll see you. Y'all got to go and go. <laughs> All right, YouTube, I'll let y'all. <laughs>